but Jim Total War here, and today we've got a Saving Your Disaster campaign. This is not a disaster battle, and uh, I thought this would be a good one because this is a Vortex disaster, which showcases a situation that I think a lot of newer players could actually get into this sort of trap here. Um, I think this is actually quite common, uh, and it's completely avoidable. So basically the situation is he's playing on very hard difficulty. As soon as he managed to get enough ritual resource for the first ritual, he immediately clicked the button and started the ritual, which is a classic trap. Because the thing is, the rewards that you get for doing the rituals are not worth the suffering that you have to do in in to deal with the rituals especially on the higher difficulties like you'll get some public order bonuses and things like that but for the most part it's not worth it because these these armies that'll pop spawn they'll spawn up in random territories it's really hard for you to predict where they're going to show up and you get virtually no time to prepare and so these these armies these chaos armies can spawn attack your settlement and blow it up completely before you have a chance to react to it and so the, the, the mild bonuses that you get for 10 turns, not really worth it in the long run. So what I recommend to people doing with these sort of situations, rather than do it immediately, because the thing is, the ritual resource will continue to accumulate, even if you don't uh, do the ritual. So you could you could have all of the ritual resource needed, the full 5,000, and not have done the first first ritual at all. So once you get to about here, then you just start doing them all at once. Once you're in a position that you've got doom sacks, that your uh, that your cities are properly walled up, and that you don't have any external issues such as you know war with lots of major powers. That's you know if you're going to play the the vortex side of things at all. The other thing that you can do to win the vortex campaign is just be ready for when these guys finish their rituals and then just beat them. Make sure that you've got your armies, you know your doom stacks ready to go. And then you just beat them one at a time, and then you don't have to worry about it. Of course, play however you want, but these are just tips to help you deal with the Vortex campaign. Because on honestly, part of the reason the Vortex campaign is difficult is because the player makes it difficult on themselves by doing the rituals before they're ready. Anyway, because it doesn't, it really doesn't warn you. Anyway, so what I'm going to do in this particular one here is I'm going to bail you out of this particular situation, and then for the rest of the campaign, I don't want you to hit that Vortex, uh, the, the, the ritual buttons, until, until you hit turn 150, basically. You accumulate as much as you can, and you just keep building up. W worry about building up your faction. Don't worry about these rituals, because they're, until you actually finish the rituals entirely, it's, it's not really worth much at all. Don't get me wrong, the, once you've finished it and you successfully can, gain control of the Vortex, the reward is reasonable. It's actually pretty good. Uh, at first, I didn't think it was that good, but now, I'm, now that I think back on it, I think, eh, the reward's actually pretty decent. But... You know, you, you don't need to do it right away. Okay, so, this army here is obviously not something you're going to be able to deal with. And also, we're on sh small unit scale here, which is really... That's going to be different, because I'm not used to fighting small unit scales. But what that's going to do is actually make sieges a little bit easier. So, uh, I've often said that if you want the, the true campaign experience, you really should be playing on huge unit scale. But I understand that some people's um, computers aren't particularly good. And so, uh, in order to you know, not have four frames per second in battle, they're gonna drop the unit scale down. But, you know, in my in my opinion, you're not you're not really getting the full experience of the game. So from what we can see, we've got one one big army there and two smaller armies over here. Not a huge problem. Uh Chakwa over here is not properly defended. And this guy here is on force march. Uh they're pro they are probably going to kill your shit here. Let's have a look at your wizard. It doesn't really matter if that one dies. They are probably going to kill you here. So cancel this. I, I think this here, this I, I can try to defend it, but I don't think it's going to work. If we, I can see you tried to put in a bunch of heroes here, but they're not. They're not going to get in there. Um, so just cancel that stuff there, because like I said, I don't think I can win this situation here. We simply don't have enough troops. You're on force march, and your armies are total trash. This situation here, however, we can do something about that. Now we need to get Gore Rock over there. Um, and uh, sort something out. Looks like you've got allies as well. Nakai the Wanderer. Mm, I'd advise against allies, but whatever. It's your campaign, you do what you want. Alright, let's have a look at the situation. So I need to I need to know what's going on in your empire first, because you've got a fair bit of territory. You know, a lot of the saving disaster campaigns, it's a case of, um, uh, they've only got like one settlement left, or barely even an army. Alright, so just get rid of this. It's just costing you too much money. 
Right. Like, Gorok can handle all of this by himself. So that shouldn't be a problem. I think you panicked a little bit. I mean, hang on, let me just have a look at your diplomatic situation. So you're at war with Vessels of Chaos, Nagaron, Dark Elf Intervention. So here's another thing, right? Um, the Dark Elf Intervention, where is... Oh, that's what this is here. Duh, okay. So that's, that's another thing as well. By delaying doing this, like if you do this on turn 50, it's possible that the other major factions will simply declare war on you to try and stop your vortex, uh, try and stop you doing things, and then they'll send armies to invade you. Whereas if you leave this until like turn 100, they probably won't ever declare war on you. I mean, you probably end up will having to go to war with the Skaven in this particular scenario anyway, but you can avoid going to war with all the major powers in this situation here. So the chaos, chaos that forces here are actually not that strong. Um, and I'll, like I said, I'll do what I can here. Can you hire another general by any chance? Because what I'm thinking, I'm thinking, let's let's get a. Um, oh, can I get a? I can't seem to get a. Uh, what's it called? A a um, Croxigore, because that'd actually be better for the situation here. Um, okay, well then, it doesn't really matter. Let's just get a Saurus Old Blood. And what I want to do is actually transfer all the troops over. And uh, I'm sure you don't want this guy here to die, so I'm going to disband him. And what I'm going to do is stand outside the settlement. That way, if we lose, your army's not going to die, most likely. But you'll still be able to bring your full force to bear. They'll just come in as reinforcements. Basically, this situation here, I don't think we're going to win. So I've put in a precaution to make sure that you don't get wiped out. So, I wouldn't even bother about this province here, just ignore it. Uh, looking at Nakai, um, you might be able to get a confederation with him a bit later on. Let's have a look diplomacy-wise and see what's going on. Um, it's, everything seems fine there. Yeah, the biggest problem here is that you started the vortex too early. That's all there is to it. Um, so, doing some construction. Let's upgrade this for you. You'd Yeah, that's fine. You really do need some more money. You're kind of cutting it close there. So, Itza will be able to hold on for a while there. I don't think they're going to make the attack right away. But when Gorok comes in... Actually, Gorok's going to really need to bloody leg it, isn't he? And at Zotul... You're not in too many wars, so let's just get rid of... Get rid of this. Sorry, not get rid of this. Let's build that up so you get more money, because you do need it. And Quackmol's crater. Probably would need walls there, but just all in due time. Alright, let's move on. It's not the most disastrous uh, of situations, but this is a... Um, I think this is a common occurrence. So, just to, I guess this one here is to help the newer players in regard to Vortex. Um, yeah, the Vortex is a trap. The, the rituals. It's a trap. Don't do it until you're really ready. Okay, so Chaos is going ahead with it. You know what? We might actually be able to auto-resolve that. Oh, they've only got one army. Okay, we can win this thing. I thought they were going to bring in both. Good stuff. And they've attacked, they've actually attacked the general there. And we're not on force march now, so if we do lose, it's not the end of the world. It's a little trick there, if you get caught in force march. Well, if you if you send a general to, into a settlement in force march, hire a new general, you just transfer all the troops over, and then they're not in force march. Because their, their stamina in these battles is tied to the general, not to, to their own personal movements. Okay, it's actually a little bit annoying that reinforcements are coming from there, but that's okay. Ugh, you got a lot of these units. Ugh, yuck. Uh, these, I don't, I'm not a fan of these units at all. I just think they're... They're just not good. Straight up not good. Especially on this unit scale. I think they're gonna do fucking nothing. Um, but I'll see what I can do. Should I have... <sighs> I would have preferred Wind Blast, but that's okay. Alright, we really, really need to try and stop that hell cannon because here's the thing on small unit scale that's actually just as powerful as it is on huge unit scale because it's still just one hell cannon uh the unit scales in this game is not very balanced at all 
So there is major differences between the different scales, and I would say that small unit scale is probably one of the most unbalanced. So yeah, definitely don't recommend playing on this unit scale. But if you are going to play on it, focus on large beasts rather than infantry, because large beasts perform... Um, like, like single entity units perform way better than infantry based units on small unit scale. And the reason for that is because scale basically affects um, infantry units in terms of number of entities, um, but also of course by hit points. Whereas if you play, uh, whereas a like a giant for example, you can't have half a giant. So the only difference with a giant, as an example, is that on small unit scale the giant has like one quarter the amount of health it would normally. But, because it's melee attack and melee damage is still exactly the same, it can fucking destroy a, a couple of infantry units in a matter of seconds because of just how much damage it can do. So it's, it's uh, really, really poorly balanced in that regard, which is why I recommend everyone play on huge unit scale. You know, if, if your computer can handle it, of course. So we're just doing a bit of skirmishing here. I think the odds are pretty damn good. Got to get rid of that hell cannon. Don't want to go into melee with it. Just use the uh, use the pterodon riders. Once we okay, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. With the hell cannon gone, um, the worst of this is really over. Just need to get my troops together. But we've got a mobility advantage. We try to use these guys as much as possible. They didn't actually do a bad job at all against those warhounds, but it ex not, warhounds aren't exactly particularly armored. The biggest problem I find with these kind of units here, they're very micro-intensive, and they do very little damage, and they have very low range. They're just, they're a disaster waiting to happen, basically. It's alright, I reckon, in multiplayer, where the uh, the, play the enemy player that you're up against is also under the same micro-intensive situ- uh, like, constraints. So out-microing your opponents in multiplayer is very effective, but out-microing the AI um, is... A bit of a pain, especially as the battles get larger and larger. The more the more units that the AI has, the uh, the better they micro compared to you. That's the thing. When playing these this game, you got to understand your strengths and weaknesses versus the computer. You're not you're not fighting a human opponent. You're you're fighting a a computer, and they have advantages over you. So don't ever play into their advantage. You know, unless unless you want to play badly, and then, that's up to you. That's up to you. If you want to do it, that's fine. You know what, that actually probably isn't too bad in this particular situation. Because on small unit scale, on small unit scale that spell is like actually really good. But on like huge unit scale that does next to no damage. That's another thing, with uh, small unit scale magic is really, really poorly optimized. Like it, they, they make no changes to the, to the scale of the spells based on unit scale. And so a spell like that on huge unit scale might kill two or three units, right? And then on small unit scale, it would also kill only two or three units. Which, on small unit scale, that's that's a greater proportion of the enemy's damage. So, magic is really, really good on small unit scale. Kind of a messy fight, this one. But uh, we've we've got this under control. It's part of the garrison, so that doesn't really matter too much. But then again, the other army might attack us over the intern as well. This guy here took a lot of damage really quickly uh, because you know small units go. But it uh, looks like we've won. Feels almost foreign playing uh, playing this on such a small unit scale. Like every now and again, I'll get uh, one sent in on like large unit scale, and that's fine. Or even normal unit scale, but very rarely do I see anyone play on on small. 
And I like like I said before, I really don't recommend people do it. But of course, I do understand that, you know, potato computers can't handle it on a huge unit scale, so I understand. Alright, that'll do. Decisive victory, cool, cool, cool. Now, they might come back again this very same turn if, uh, if they go into Force March stance and the other army attacks as well. to make sure we're ready for it. Right, so yeah, they're coming into attack. Alright, this will be a little bit harder this time because we didn't really take very much damage in that first fight. But this army here looks a little bit better than the previous one. So it's pretty much going to be the exact same situation. Um, Got to protect the town. A uh, Croxagore general would have been better in this situation here, but I somewhat have a suspicion that uh, you don't have that DLC because, you know, otherwise it would have shown up there. Now, even though I've got that DLC, you should still be able to continue the campaign because um, I think it's tied to the, the actual campaign itself, not... Yeah. So, I, I, I don't know. Because everyone that I've sent back save files to despite using DLC, thinking that, oh, you're not going to be able to play this uh, now without getting the DLC. They've all been able to respond back and saying, yeah, I was able to play it just fine. Um, with the only exception being Godric and Felix. But Godric and Felix is free now. So I'm going to keep them back for now, because there's... Yeah, just keep them back. This guy is taking a lot of damage. I've also got that. I didn't use that last time. All right. So first thing we're going to do, take out that... Uh, Take out that hill cannon, just like last time. Alright. Yeah, so the AI get loads and loads. It's not good. If they're casting that spell. See how... Look how much magic does to you on this on this unit scale. Holy crap. That was all just one um, spirit leech. Just one. Alright, well I've still got this guy over here. Like, if that was huge unit scale, that, I would have just brushed that off and it would have done nothing. But on this unit scale here, Spirit Leech is so fucking powerful. Like I said, the balance in the game completely changes on different unit scales. Alright, he's back. We lost one of the Pterodons. Um, yeah, that magic is going to be a problem for us for sure. We need to take out the Hell Cannon because it's one of their best units because of the unit scale. It's exactly the same as if it was on, on huge unit scale. Hmm. I don't know. It's not a great unit anyway. Absolutely deadly on this unit scale because you know you lose you lose two men and it's like it's like half your bloody unit. So bouncer power is in our favour, but we've got we've separated army, so that's a bit of an issue. I might see if I can get rid of this general, but the thing is, he'll just use Spirit Leech again, and just totally wreck our unit. So yeah, you... I can kind of see why people think, some people think Death Magic is so good. They're probably playing on small unit scale, they're like, Death Magic's awesome, what are you talking about, Legend? Like, I, I, I never see Death, uh, I tell you what, on huge unit scale, Spirit Leech is like nothing. It, it doesn't do anything. See, so watch this. Look at the damage it's doing. Holy shit. But the, yeah, they only killed one of them. So the garrison here doesn't matter too much. Yeah, definitely shouldn't be fighting them. Now trying to waste their magic is not a good idea either. Um, 
Yeah, tricky situation. Because that, that wizard there could do way above his pay grade in terms of damage. Alright. Alright, this is better over here. Now we can deal with a smaller portion of their army. Over here. Like, those guys there, they're probably dead, dead, dead meat. So, they're unlikely to get into melee with us, and I'm pretty sure we'll end up doing more missile damage to them. But we probably should focus on them, because... Well, just take them out first. These are will be easier to deal with, kind of. So yeah, I'm just gonna hide the uh, those guys there for the time being. I'm not gonna worry too much over here because I think it's pretty much doomed over this way. Just have them use up their ammo as best they can and let that be the venom. I'm much more better off to micromanage this situation here. Bouncer power's moving in our favor, so everything's looking okay. It's just that Spirit Leech, it did so much damage. Yeah, the, uh... Chaos Spawn, they're, uh, easy targets. Get rid of them. Oh, good, we got rid of it. We got rid of the, uh, the Hell Cannon. That's good. Oh, shit, what about that? Do they spirit leech us? Yeah. So yeah, this actually might actually might have been a better choice than uh, wind blast. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, you chose correct. Okay. See, on huge unit scale, that would never have happened. Yeah, on small unit scale, definitely around the Thunderbolts. I've... holy crap. That's just broken. It's like one shot, you're dead. Yeah, no shit. Holy crap. Um, well, you know, they used uh, Spirit Leech and that did a lot of damage to us. And then we used uh, Iran and Thunderbolt, which did a lot of damage to them. Garrison doesn't matter too much. And we got this as well, which will probably do monstrous amounts of damage because it doesn't scale based on difficulty. Uh, sorry, based on unit scale. Yeah, look at look how much damage that's doing. On, on um, huge unit scale, that would have just done nothing. Holy crap. I should have done that in the previous battle. Holy crap. Alright, now, where's my cavalry dude? There he is. Let's bring him over here, and... Well, killing the enemy general is probably not going to really do anything. Maybe maybe just try and take out some of these Chaos Warriors. Okay. Man, this is like a learning experience for me as well. Because I, I never play on this unit scale. This is actually turning out to be a lot easier than I thought it was going to be to fix. I mean, I actually didn't think we'd win either of those battles. Well, you know, I didn't think we'd, we'd win this situation, I, sh I should say. With that that particular situation. Um, but yeah, there's no real problem there. It's just regimented for now. No big deal. Get rid of that. Should be able to just finish those two guys off. Next turn. Yeah, probably best leave them be. You don't really want any more problems right now with them. 
Alright, so now, I mean, I guess you hide these guys for a reason, and they will help with... With Bounce of Power. Don't know how you want to level up your dudes, I'm just going to let you do that, but you should always put that point in. Alright, we can order resolve that. Cool, and that is, that is that. Vessels of Chaos down, and now we just need to deal with this, and then you're, you're set to go for the ritual. Let me just see what the situation is if I was to sally out here. Oh, okay, never mind. <laughs> okay then. Well, okay, well that's actually fixed the situation for you straight away. Okay, well. Well. Okay, <laughs> that's the end of this disaster campaign. Problem solved, okay. So... Alright, so what I've learned today is that small unit scale is broken, and I won't be playing on small unit scale again. So, um, that's the end of this one, because there's, there's no more waves to come, I think, and his armies are under control. Uh, we dealt with the intervention, that's fine. Um, Alright guys, that's the end of this one. I hope you found something useful in, in this video, and I'll see you next time, fuckers.